China's fight with Britain over Hong Kong is heating up. Beijing says that it will no longer recognize the special British passport held by some of the city's residents. For a closer look at the latest move by China, we're joined by Andrew Leung. He's an independent China strategist and he is in Hong Kong. Mr. Leung, why does Beijing see this UK pathway to citizenship as such a threat? Well, first of all, uh, it, it is an affront uh, to China over the national security law. Um, and it is regarded uh, by the West uh, as cram carrying down on democracy. But it, in the eyes of Beijing, it's nothing of that sort. Because you look at what happened in Hong Kong uh, during the past two years, uh, with all these um, uh, 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 rioters, you know, sort of um, causing the total breakdown of law and order. And then, uh, of course, uh, all countries have a national security law, and then Hong Kong, um, as part of China, should have no ex exception. But then for the UK to um, unilaterally change the status uh, of the British nationality overseas passport, which was uh, regarded by China's uh, travel document, because that was the intention and, and the spirit, and in fact the letter uh, in the joint declaration. Um, because at, when Hong Kong reverted back to China, uh, the BNO already existed, but purely as a travel document. So this unilateral change of the status um, is in fact a violation uh, of the uh, joint declaration with China, hence uh, China's you know, response. And will China's move have any impact on Britain's new visa scheme for Hong Kong residents? Well, I think that some Hong Kong people who are thinking of taking advantage of that uh, may have um, some second thoughts. Um, but of course, that um, uh, 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 even if China doesn't recognize the BNO as a travel document, Hong Kong people can use the Hong Kong SAR passport, which is recognized by over 100 countries worldwide um, to travel out of China, uh, out of Hong Kong. Um, there is no way that the Hong Kong the government can stop uh, Hong, um, uh, applicants of BNO passports from leaving Hong Kong. But on the other hand, um, if they lose the, um, uh, 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 they can't use the BNO as a travel document, um, and 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 that's uh, some people may have some second thoughts. But at the end of the day, it's no easy task of moving, uprooting yourself, uh, lock, stock, and barrel to live in the UK. So, so Andrew, can we expect Hong Kong immigration officials then to stop recognizing the passports as well? I mean, can they stop BNO passport holders from actually leaving the city? Well, as I said, the Hong Kong people can use the Hong Kong SAR passport rather than the BNO passport, right? Um, uh, and then, of course, if they eventually, the Hong Kong people, uh, having fulfilled the conditions in Britain, acquire the British citizenship, that's another story. Um, but I think that from the UK's perspective, um, A, it is um, uh, 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 the UK government is in sync with the West, push back against China. Uh, on perceived um, erosion of human rights, especially in Hong Kong. Uh, so to that extent, the UK government is in sync with the United States. Um, but I think that the UK government also sees that there is an opportunity to attract a lot of um, well-off, uh, if not very wealthy, uh, people from Hong Kong. Uh, because Hong Kong, after all, is, is Asia's, uh, one of Asia's richest cities. Uh, and then uh, the, uh, a lot of people are uh, well, well trained. Now, this comes uh, very handy at a time um, when Britain has already left the European Union uh, with a lot of uh, EU citizens moving back to the EU. And then um, a timely arrival of um, well-off and well-trained Hong Kong citizens uh, would be regarded as an advantage. And how do you expect this then to affect diplomatic ties between the UK and China going forward then? Well, um, of course, the, uh, the diplomatic relations uh, takes, uh, there was an ups and downs. Don't forget the UK was the first um, to join the um, Asian uh, Infrastructure Investment, um, uh, in, um, uh, investment Bank um, led by China against the 
um, um, uh, remonstrations from the United States. But on the other hand, um, um, the relationship has uh, taken a downturn uh, with what's happening in Hong Kong uh, with the enactment of the national security law. Uh, and then um, I think that the um, uh, Boris Johnson government uh, wants to uh, uh, be ally uh, in alignment with, uh, with the United States, even under the Biden administration of a pushback against China at this stage. Uh, but I think that um, in due course, uh, the UK may, may find it um, uh, of advantage, of course, of, or, or if not necessity, to, include, to conclude a free trade agreement with China. And so I think that the relationship uh, between the UK and China uh, is not all dead yet. All right. Well, thank you for your thoughts this evening. Andrew Leung, international and independent China strategist in Hong Kong.